Microsoft BlackRock partnership, 30 billion rising to 100 billion, rising to 100 billion. The goal is to invest in infrastructure for powering these data centers. And Pat, I, rather than talking too much about this fund, I think it's more of a theme. Yesterday, I shared a job um, a description and a, and, a, and a data center dynamics article that talked about uh, Amazon hiring a, a principal nuclear engineer for AWS. Uh, we heard about the reopening of Three Mile Island. Uh, we are hearing Larry Ellison on stage talking about nukes and building kind of uh, specialized nuclear power facilities to power these data centers as he talks about thousand percent increase in data centers over the next handful of years. We've got, you know, NVIDIA hogging more power than any other company on the planet right now. Um, and of course, we've got multi hundred billions of CapEx rising at fast rates for every cloud company in the world. Problem is we are running out of power. So now we're starting to see a new cycle, a new news cycle. And the new news cycle is, holy crap, wind, solar is not going to get this done. We are going to need something more robust. Uh, we're not going to do more coal fire. Uh, we're going to have to find a new way. And the cleanest available energy, despite its sort of historic bad press, is nuclear. And problem is, in parts of the world like Germany, they've shut it all down. In the U.S. here, we've basically not invested in a long time in any meaningful capacity. So we've got this interesting inflection now where we want AI. We're thirst for it. Not thirsty enough to buy an iPhone 16, but we're thirsty for more GPUs. And then, Pat, of course, this also accelerates the acceleration, uh, the accelerator conversation. We are accelerating our conversation about accelerators for AI because, as we know, as these workloads and needs become more well understood, we can build specialty chips that are going to be more efficient for doing those specific things that will use less power, but nonetheless, a lot of power is needed. So, Pat, to me, this is not so much a big moment with just the BlackRock Microsoft thing, but this is going to be like we heard about all these LLM partnerships and Tropic and Amazon and Microsoft. We're going to hear the next wave is going to be companies tying up major investment funds to figure out how to get more power because the next oil is not GPUs. It's going to be enough power to power those GPUs. What do you think? There's so much here. And you know what? I'm going to be late to my workout. I'm yeah, so go quick so you can get your workout. No, I don't want to go quick. This is this All right, go slow and tell your trainer to – and anyway, I, I, he's not well, watching. Actually, I built some time in knowing that you never show up on time and I get out – we get out late. I'm just kidding. I was right on time today. Yo. I know. Please, please don't jump on that. Um, okay, so a couple uh, gap fillers here. Uh, China competitiveness, right? So I think it's just uh, – is that a helicopter? Oh, um, yeah, China competitiveness uh, is, is kicking in here, right? Um, China has been putting up uh, new nukes and new coal fire uh, like absolute uh, crazy here. And here we are. Let me give it a good example. Uh, East Grid uh, in Virginia, where AWS has its largest data centers, has 3% power uh, remaining to um, uh, support more people. Uh, EVs uh, and data centers. There will not be new data centers being installed in a place where there's uh, three percent energy. Uh, our regulatory environment is is so uh, strict that uh, there likely won't be any new energy put in there for I don't know five years. I'm very can safely say even if you put up a coal fire. You can't drive enough power with solar that's consistent. The, the, the challenge with solar is that um, um, it, it's it's consistent only with the sun uh, being out. <clears throat> yeah, nothing against solar. I'm just I'm just spitting out uh, out the facts here. And uh, with what uh, Greenpeace did and other activists um, did on nukes, uh, it became uh, a bad thing uh, to. Uh, to install any new nukes out there, even though it's literally the cleanest energy, cleanest consistent energy that that you can do. Um, and it's amazing, Dan. Were you even born in Three Mile Island? Uh, you know, almost had a meltdown. How about Chernobyl? Probably okay. Uh, it looks like lawn people are probably there. Okay, I get it. Thanks. I don't want to distract you. I know how that noise can be. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, 
but but yeah, I, I'm just struck at at how little foresight that that we have as a country to predict things, and we just go along uh, for the ride as as corporations, right? I just just another example where we can find ourselves just on the complete ass end of 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 a trend. Uh, I am very inspired though by some of these act companies that used to be very activist. Um, they've got their ESG reports that are now freaking going all in on 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 nukes. <laughs> and I absolutely love that. Dan, you brought up the essentially the ASIC versus GPU. Jensen Wong was was quoted in this, and Jensen does need a heck of a lot of power to 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 see his growth. But I really hope that it drives the conversation on on power efficiency. A hundred percent, I'll take this to the bank and I'll die on this vine that ASICs are more efficient than GPUs, up to ten x efficient. GPUs, to me, you can bank on for two or three um, generations of it, um, and at least as it relates to you know TPU, even ASICs are coming out uh, new ones every year from these folks. So I really hope this drives the conversation about you know why aren't we seeing more Gaudi, right? Intel Gaudi. Why aren't we seeing uh, more Grok uh, out there? Why aren't we seeing more Qualcomm A100, right? And I know those are primarily inference, but when it comes to Maya uh, and TPU and Trainium, uh, those do LLM training and LLM uh, inference. So I hope it drives this conversation. It's a good conversation. <laughs> Have. Yeah, I, I mean, there have been some wins. We saw, you know, cited in a, a, a press uh, note about Grok and, and Aramco Digital partnering 19,000 LPUs going into the Middle East to, to run the inference of Aramco Digital. So we are seeing it, Pat, but it's been, you know, our forecast has as about a 20% delta in terms of how fast ASICs are going to grow versus GPUs. I actually think it's going to get bigger than that. You know, when you're building bottoms up, it tends to come from data from people with less foresight. So you got to always sort of take a little bit of a risk top down. And my my assessment is the GPU CapEx investment won't stop growing, but it might normalize more. You know, you've got Maya coming online. You've got AWS doing their thing. You saw ByteDance, Alibaba, you know, Meta. Uh, you just kind of go down the list. They're all building their own. Um, you know that Arm's got something up its sleeve. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm suspicious that it does. Um, and what I mean by this is these companies aren't building these to not use them. And of course, Google TPU hogs close to seven, eight billion dollars a year of spend on just on, on, on TPUs for their own use cases. So, Pat, this is going to happen. This is going to happen, and it has to happen. And by the way, it doesn't mean there's no cycle for continued buying of GPUs. It just means it's going to change. We all knew the training will continue, and ten to twenty companies will train mega models. Everyone else is going to use more efficient, use case specific chips that can train for a need or more importantly, deliver inference for a specific workload. That's going to happen.